do anything that you set your mind to and work really hard at. And I'm like, gosh. Now, now that I'm an adult, I know that's so not true. Because my whole life, all I've ever wanted to be was a ninja, right? <laughs> and I've never seen anyone hiring ninjas, so that's why I'm in real estate. Um, <laughs> um, so my name is Yoshi. A couple things about me. I was born and raised here in Salt Lake City. Um, my dream was actually to be a professional boxer. Um, as a little kid, my two favorite sports were football and boxing. I learned at a young age I really, really like to hit people. <laughs> um, after, uh, after high school, oddly enough, instead of pursuing the fight game, I became a hairstylist to the rich and famous. I moved to New York City for 18 years, where I cut um, different rich and famous people that you may recognize, like Anderson Cooper and Matt Atkinson. <laughs> Cooper's hairstylist for, uh, personal hairstylist for six years. Um, I actually did this haircut the morning of this cover shoot for Vanity Fair. Um, I would go to his house or the CNN office. He'd literally be flying in from Afghanistan. He'd call me and say, um, I need a haircut. I'm leaving in six hours to you know wherever he goes off to. So uh, was, uh, through him, I actually got other clients like Matthew Broderick and, and Matt Atkinson. So. <laughs> Um, this is a project that uh, my mom, my wife, and myself worked on. It's a book that educates children on the prevention of sexual abuse. And um, Richard Paul Evans was actually our mentor. He helped us get this book published. So, also an author. And just a little bit, sorry, a little bit on me. I'm also an inventor. Um, I'm a patent owner. I invented this leash called Snap Leash that was inspired by living in New York City where everybody walked their dog to run errands. Uh, we don't have yards in New York City, so if you're going to Starbucks, the grocery store, the post office, you're taking your dog to exercise, we're actually finalizing some documents with China. Um, we're getting ready to manufacture, hopefully by summer, it will uh, we'll have it ready, but it allows you to tie your dog around any tree or pole without any knots. Um, really quickly, it's totally symmetric on both sides. You have this first loop here that creates your handle. You get to a big tree or pole or meter, and you can wrap it around and basically run into Starbucks, get your coffee while your dog's tied around the tree. So, yeah, thank you. I want one. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what's that? Yeah, it works on Matt. <laughs> All right, so. And I'm also a real estate investor. Um, I did my very first deal, I started investing in 2001. Um, since then, I lived, uh, I've invested in Salt Lake, New York, and Kansas City. Um, by the time I'm done here, I'm gonna share with you guys why Salt Lake is one of my favorite markets. Um, so what is virtual investing and why I started? Virtual investing is when you invest in a market outside of the marketplace that you live in. Why did I start in, uh, virtual investing? Because living in Manhattan, where everything was super expensive, I couldn't afford those types of deals. So I did my very first deal in 2001 right here in Salt Lake. Since then, I started doing them in, like I said, Kansas City and uh, upstate New York. Now, when I start virtual investing, there's a couple things that I want to do to research a market before I enter that market to see if that's going to be a good market to invest in virtually. So this is some of the research that I'll do. I did it for Salt Lake, um, which is why I love this market. First thing I'll do is I'll go to Wikipedia, whatever market it is, and I will read everything I can read about that potential market. I've only been to Kansas City three days in my whole entire life, and the majority of my portfolio sits in Kansas City, but I'm very knowledgeable about Kansas City because I've studied it dramatically. Um, so these are things that I'll do to study a particular market. I'll go to uh, Wikipedia. Things that I found there um, at uh, Wikipedia is the population growth. As Pete was talking about, Salt Lake is growing, and that's awesome. If you see right here, um, Utah was the second fastest growing state in 2009 behind Wyoming, according to the U U.S. Census Bureau. 2009 was the most recent stat I could find, I couldn't find 11. 
Now, I don't know if that's growing dramatically because people are moving here in hordes or Mormons are having a lot of babies. I'm not sure. But I'll ask my bishop and see what he says. Um, <laughs> um, another thing that's super critical is the Asian versus Hispanic growth. Now, the reason why this is so important I'm totally kidding. I'm half Japanese, half Mexican, so you want a lot of Asians and Hispanics. All right. <laughs> um, another cool thing about Salt Lake City, it's a megalopolis. It's grown into a megalopolis. What's a megalopolis? A megalopolis is when two cities grow so large that they end up touching one another. When I was a little kid growing up here in Salt Lake, and we lived in Salt Lake City, um, which is why I grew up in Salt Lake, if we lived in Salt Lake. Um, and we would drive to either Ogden or Provo. You would drive in the middle of nowhere until you finally reached that city. Well now, literally, from Ogden all the way down to Provo, we have one major city that's totally, completely touched one another. So it's a good sign of growth. A lot of people are moving here. Okay, another cool thing about Salt Lake is it is what I call, it's going to be what I call the New York City effect or an island effect. If you think of the island Manhattan in New York City, there's only so much land that can be developed and once you run out of land, um, you can't keep building into the Hudson River. Um, so if the population continues to grow and the desirability is there, values have to go up because there's no place left to develop. Last, this last summer, I went to hike uh, Mount Olympus and was standing at the trailhead. It's right there on Wasatch. I don't know if any of you know where that is, but literally standing at the trailhead, I turned around and looked west. And literally right there from Wasatch all the way to the copper mine had all been developed. So we're pretty much out of land. Once this land is gone and the population still continues to grow and the demand to live here, usually that means values will go up. So as Pete was talking about appreciation, this is a phenomenal opportunity for us with limited land for that to happen. Okay, another thing that I like to do when I'm looking to invest in a market is I want to see if the market itself is investing in itself. This is a slide from a website in Kansas City and you can see that more than nine billion dollars in major improvements are underway across the Kansas City, uh, across Kansas City, 4.5 in the downtown area alone. Now here in Salt Lake, we have what's the, the big huge City Creek project that's actually not funded by the city. It is the largest private project in the country going right now. I couldn't find hard numbers, maybe people might know that are here, but anywhere from 1.5 billion to $3 billion are being dumped into our downtown area right now, re-energizing our market. It's also bringing jobs, so that's again, population growth. Okay, another thing that I'll do, is I'll go research the Chamber of Commerce website. And you can see, I want to check um, out the economy and basically check out employment. You can see right here, 30,300 jobs during the past year here in Utah from November 2010 to 2011, making it the second fastest growing economy in the nation. Now, I guarantee not all of those 30,300 jobs were given to Utah locals. People came in from out of town to take those jobs, helping, again, the population growth. Um, some marquee companies, you'll see people like Adobe, Goldman Sachs, actually this next slide is also from the Chamber of Commerce. These are all jobs that these companies, and this isn't all of them, this is just what could fit on this slide. These are all jobs that have been created over the last year. 2,200 jobs from eBay, 1,500 jobs from Goldman Sachs. I was speaking to one of the employees at Goldman Sachs, actually this week, oddly enough, and she said that there are literally, Goldman Sachs is literally shipping in tons and tons of people from New York City to relocate here because they need to train the people that are working here at, this, at the Goldman Sachs office here. So all those people that are moving here, and I guarantee 2,200 people that are now working at eBay are not all from Utah, all these people that are moving here need a place to live. That's where we all come in, whether we're a landlord or a fix and flipper, we can provide that housing for them. So, the next thing I checked out on the Chamber of Commerce, the future job agenda, 150,000 jobs over the next five years is what they're expecting here in Utah. And interestingly enough, I found here 
that the transportation is looking to invest four billion dollars in new infrastructure. So after I read that, I actually went to the UTA Transit Authority's website to see if I could find any future plans. I'm not a big land, in fact, I've never invested in raw land, but if I can see plans on the UTA Transit Authority say they're gonna be developing tracks to a certain area in the middle of nowhere, there's a reason, right? They're not gonna develop it into the middle of nowhere for no reason. If I can find those future plans, then this may be an opportunity to start looking into investing some raw land. I don't right now, but I'm going to keep my eye on that. Okay, another thing that I will do while researching the market is I'll pull up the master plan. And you can go through and read the master plan. This just happens to be pointing at the City Creek master plan that is going on downtown. So you can actually go online and kind of read what's, what's going on if you don't already know. I know they show a lot on the news. Okay, now, once you've determined your market, in this case it's Salt Lake City, you need to pick your pocket market within the market. So, I love to use this website, trulia.com, I pull up the heat map. Now, let's just say you're interested in playing ball in entry-level homes, possibly medium price point homes, or high-end homes. And you need to now know where these price points are so that you can focus your energy on those particular areas. You can actually zoom in on this map and you can see if you're looking to play in, let's say, the median price point, you can find out what color that's represented, find it on the map, and zoom in so you can get a really good, you know, you can actually see the street names of where these communities are. You know, here in Salt Lake, we have the advantage of kind of knowing this stuff already. When I first entered the market, like for instance, Kansas City, I had no idea. So this was a huge, valuable site for me. Okay, so now, it's about analyzing the property. Um, we've picked our market, we've done the research, we see there's job growth, we see population growth, we see a lot of good things. Um, and we've now picked our market, we've picked the pocket market, it's time to analyze the property. I do what's called an anchor test. Um, what's an anchor? Something that anchors a community, a Walmart, a Costco, a college, a university. Um, I also look for the 5%. They say that the wealthiest 5% in this world actually control 95% of the money. And those are corporations like Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Costco. Now, what I will do is, I have a mentor that once taught me, never be a pioneer in real estate investing. Don't try and go into a market and revitalize it, re-energize it by yourself. You'll have a very difficult time succeeding. Follow the 5%. Follow the money. Follow the cities that are investing in themselves and follow the 5%. Walmart does millions of dollars of due diligence before they open up a store confirming that this area can support their business. If, that, if they go through and do that due diligence, that usually tells me that's a desirable place to live. So when I'm analyzing a property, the first thing I do is I pull it up on Google Earth and I look for the 5%. If this 5% is not investing there, I'm a little bit iffy personally about going, I want to follow the money. Now this next slide is on Google Earth, and it's just an example of an area that we're all familiar with. You can see the Fashion Place Mall, the major anchor, has lots of the 5% in them. We've also got Intermountain and Costco. This is what I'll do. I will do this when I'm analyzing property locally, just to save time. I'm not driving around looking for the 5%, and I'll also do this virtually. Okay, the next thing that I'll do is I'll plug that address into Bing Maps. It's actually bing.com forward slash maps. I do this locally as well as virtually because I don't want to drive. You can see that orange dot. I was analyzing the property. This is 4800 South. I don't remember what east or what west, but I was analyzing the property and that's what the block looked like. You got a residential house, some type of auto mechanic junkyard, residential house, and a commercial. If I was to drive there, the second I pulled up to it, I wouldn't even get out of my car. I'd turn around and just drive home. I'd be like, that's not something I'm interested in. So by pulling it up here, I can save my myself some time, money, and gas by not having to go look at it. Obviously, what we're looking for is something more along the lines of this bottom image. House, 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 house. Not mixed in with commercial. So I will do this virtually and locally. And then the last thing I'll do is a Google view uh, of a street view. And I'll go in and look at the house, one house at a time, turn around, and then look at the other side. I want to get a read on how the neighbors in that, market, in that particular street are before I head over to that property. 
when I say head over, I mean if it's local, I'll get my car and drive over there. Obviously, I can if it's uh, if it's not. Okay. Then the next thing that I'll do is I'll pull comps. Now, my wife's a realtor, so we have the luxury of pulling comps off the MLS here in Utah. But I don't have access to the MLS in Kansas City or New York. And for those of us who are realtors, we know that that's the best solid comp you can pull. But for those of us who are not, there, there are times, for instance, when I'm submitting as many as 10 to 30 offers in a single day that I've kind of been tracking. And if I shoot, over, if I shoot an email to my realtor in Kansas City and say, hey, or any realtor, if I shoot over uh, 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 an email to my realtor and say, hey, can you pull 30 comps for me? I want to get the values. I don't think there's a realtor, and if there is, raise your hand because I need to know who you are. But I don't think there's a realtor in here who's like going to be jumping for joy to pull 30 comps on 30 properties that have not been accepted. So what I will do in the case where I don't have access to the MLS is I'll come to this website, realestate.com. They give you 10 comps. Now it's not as accurate as the MLS in the sense I should say it's not as detailed in the sense that you can't put bed, or you can't put garage or carport or. Uh, ranch or split entry, but what you can do is you can see that there's bed, bath, square footage, data sold, and the price. It gives you a pretty good idea. Also, it shows you your subject property you're analyzing and where those comps are relative to you. So, it's funny, I submitted a batch of offers when I first started working with my realtor in Kansas City. And I submitted offers and he's like, how do you know what the values are? I said, oh, I pulled some comps. And he's like, well, how'd you pull comps? I'm your realtor, right? He's like, pissed. He thought I was using another realtor to pull comps or something. I'm like, oh, well, I use realestate.com. And so he went and checked it out later, and he told me later, he's now told all his clients, don't bother me for comps until after the offer is accepted. Go to realestate.com. <laughs> so the next thing that I want to do is, if this is a buy and hold, I want to gauge what the rental income for that particular property is. I go to rentometer.com. Now, what didn't show up for whatever reason when I took the snapshot, and this blank space is a map similar to realestate.com. So just like that, it just gives you your subject property with the, with the comparables. It does the exact same thing for rent. So it actually gives you a map and says, here's your subject property. Here are other properties in your surrounding area that are renting through this. So it gives you an idea. I like to confirm that number after the offer has been accepted hard with the property management company, though. This is a good, a good place to get some ideas of what you're ready to go for. Okay, after that, you've now gathered your information. It's time to go ahead and submit the offer. And if your offer gets accepted, due diligence, due diligence, due diligence, locally, virtually, it doesn't matter. If it does not get accepted, then you're gonna to wanna to track that property. I like to submit an offer on the same property every four weeks, uh, if granted no one's picked it up. And the, mo the money's in the follow-up. You wanna keep following these properties. Oftentimes, investors forget about it after they submitted an offer. It did get locked in contract four weeks later. It's old news. Be the one to follow up on it. Okay, so as you can see, this is why between the population growth, the job situation, the money that's being dumped into Salt Lake City, the fact that we're almost out of land, the megalopolis, there's so many reasons why I'm so excited for the opportunity that we all have right now as far as investing in real estate. Um, lastly, being that I am on the board, I just wanted to do a quick plug. You know, I'm excited, even though you know I've invested for since 2001, to learn from our mentor Randall on the bus tour April 21st, where you're going to be able to touch, see, smell, hear, and if you want, taste Utah real estate. <laughs> <laughs> and um, basically, thanks for listening, and I'm Yoshi. Amazing. There's always something new I learned from him, and he's just a lot of fun. I wish I had half that energy. It must be the shorts, right? Not turning the extra weight around. Half action going on there. Okay, good stuff happening in the market right now. There's a lot of good things happening. Who did their first deal ever? <laughs> 